is going to be your handle for your stabilizing jacks. Now it is a um, a three quarter or a 19 millimeter. Mm -hmm. You can use a drill on it. We don't recommend using an impact because if, yeah. you know, if it binds up, that impact is going to try to force it past. Yeah. A drill will stop. Okay. Uh, another thing with your jacks, the less they travel, the more stable your camp will feel. Mm -hmm. um, again, those are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. So you want to try to get it as level as you can, front to back, side to side. You may even have to, depending on the campsite, you may have to pull one side up on some blocks or something. Yeah. I'm just going to set this in here real quick. Uh, if you're owning, you want to look at it as like a big parachute. If that fabric's bouncing, you want to close that on. Um, say, for example, you're sitting out here, it's a little bit of mist, it's not real bad windy but you got water puddling on top you want the water to run off to one side or the other all you do is pull this on yeah i didn't know if there was any water up there and i didn't want to jump it on the <laughs> so you just pull either arm down and let the water run off to that side and you go to retract your own just push the arm up retract it in uh, all the controls for that will be inside. Once we go inside, I'll go over that. Okay. The steps are just your standard fold up steps. Some people like to put a bungee cord on them. It's really not necessary. Uh, you got the grab handle. It also acts as a safety where if uh -huh. your door was to come open during transit, it'll keep the door closed. <coughs> You got outdoor speakers, they are marine gray speakers, so they're designed to get wet, and it's not submerged. And if they're submerged, you got bigger problems anyway. Right here, uh, this camper, you should have two options to put water in your fresh water tank. This is direct feed to your fresh water, and then over here, your CD water, uh, your CD water hookup, you have a valve that you can turn from CD water or to fresh water. So, like I say, you got two options where you can put water in your first tank. It still goes to the same tank, you just got two inputs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, those windows are only the only. This little yeah. rock gate valve right here, that's going to be your drain for your fresh water tank. Yeah. And then the two blue lines, that's just your overflow for the fresh water tank. Okay. You got an outside 110 outlet here where if you like wanted to bring a TV, if you'll notice it's got a sticker on it saying GFCI protected. Um, there may be one or two outlets on this camper that's wired directly to your breaker panel, but the rest of them are gonna be wired through a GFCI, which should be in your bathroom. Meaning if you ever plug up something that's not working, check that GFCI. And then here's your cable for your TV. Mm -hmm. You got a little outdoor spray port right here. It works just like an air hose. You got a hose over in the front compartment that connects to it. Now this port, the only thing you'll get is cold water. You got another little section up front that you can get cold and hot water out of. Are you familiar with a black tank flush? Yeah. Uh, this is gonna be black tank flush. Um, I still tell everybody, you may wanna have two separate hoses for your camper in there. This does have a check valve. But it's just a spring-loaded plunger, so if that check valve fails, you know, you can get We got to uh, you too. You got an LP quick connect here. Now on this quick connect, if this, this is your own off lever. Uh -huh. If the lever's in the on position, it will not let you push that back to plug the hose into it. Mm -hmm. If you have to have it in the off position, then it'll let you push that back and plug the hose in, and then turn it on. Is that, oh, they've got a regulator and everything on it? Your regulator's up, up there. there. Come on, this. Okay. Of course, you got another jack here, your rear bumper. When these things are new, they're a little tough. Yeah. But you know what that is. Yeah. Okay. I recommend using a pair of pliers the first time. Like I said, it's a storage compartment for the rear hose. <clears throat> if you'll look up there, it's already pre-wired for a backup camera. Um, if you wanted to add one, it's like a seven, eight hundred dollar option, but it's wired into your running lights, so that way you can turn your running lights on while you're driving and see behind you. Mm -hmm. 
Another thing is it also has a speaker option where you can hear what's going on back here as well. Oh, okay. Uh, That'd be great. Like that. Of course, this right here, this is your furnace exhaust. Um, whenever you're using a furnace, you don't want to put anything in this area that's flammable or that can melt. Then you got the full size spare. Your shoreline power is a 30 amp. Um, if you're trying to make reservations and they say, hey, we don't have a 30, all we have is a 50. You know, all you gotta do is get you, get you a dog on the back. Yeah, I'm not having a dog. That's a 30 foot feet. On your ladder, uh, most of these are rated for like 250, 300 pounds. We use them all the time. All I suggest is before you climb up, to just give it a good tug, make sure it feels solid. Uh, rule of thumb is if the camper has a ladder attached to it, then your roof should be suitable for walking. Mm -hmm. We still suggest try to stay on the right. Yeah, yeah sure. You should be <clears throat> this here is your water heater. You got gas and electric. Um, really shouldn't have to mess with anything out here unless if you're actually having an issue. Uh, now, are you familiar with winterizing a camper? I am. Do you plan on putting the an antifreeze and all that in it, or you just going to turn? Well, you know, if it drops down, I will. Oh. Um, so I thought this was a tank of water. No, it's not a tank. Okay, that's fine. You got a cap right here to drain the water heater. You just take that cap off, and I believe it's an inch and a sixteenth if you want to use a socket. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times when you take that cap off, it's it's not able to vent, so it'll it takes forever to drain. Mm -hmm. You take that cap, just pull that pressure valve, and then it'll drain. Close this, and you'll see it better. Here's gonna be your low point drains for your cold and hot, meaning to drain the light, the water out of your interior lines. Yeah. Um, this is gonna be your gray tank, and this is gonna be your black tank, and of course you got your sewer hook up here. Uh -huh. uh, that blue light that you're seeing, to turn that light on, it should be on the control panel in there, or it's in this front compartment up there. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions about Black tank, gray tank, or anything? No. Uh, the only thing I said I was familiar with flushing it. I want you to show me how to do that, how to put it in the pump. When I... You're talking about the antifreeze? Yeah. Antifreeze. Okay. okay. We'll, get, we'll get to that point. Now, I do want to mention this. This is a mistake that I see a lot of people make, even if people that's been camping for a lot of years. You know, when they do an extended stay, they'll hook their sewer hose up, they pull their valves, leave their valves open all the time. Don't do that. Like that, the hard one. What happens, the liquid drains, but the solids don't. Yeah. Another way of cleaning your black tank, when you know you're gonna be traveling, dump you one or two bags of ice down the toilet. And while you're traveling, that ice will sloss around that tank to help clean it. I was gonna ask you, you told me about the flush tank over there. Does that have something there that's sprayed or is water just running it's, in? No, it's plumbed to the side of the tank and on the inside of the tank, it does have some sprayers in there. Um, We've had scenarios where those jets have stopped up and we've had to take the tank and notice. You can't get to them. If something's going on with them, you just have to replace the tank. Another thing I want to mention, uh, if you have kids, grandkids, make sure they don't pee down the shower. Because again, the only thing that goes to that black tank is the toilet only. If they're peeing down the shower, that's going to go in your gray tank. And then when your pee traps dry out, you're going to smell that. Hook up back there, and then you got the two valves there. This is that hose I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. So you can connect it back there, and you can turn that hose in the water. Remember, I told you that awesome. you water in the first time. Mm -hmm. This is your shooting water. You turn that valve, this one is coming back and put the water in the first time. Mm -hmm. Turn it to this one, you can be getting the shooting water. Mm -hmm. Of course, you got the battery disconnected. There's your cable satellite input. You remember that light back there with the sewer hookup? That blue light? That's the on off switch there. 
got another GFC off to take it out here. You know, right back there, I believe you have a solar panel, so just let me know what your solar panel is doing. Okay. Now we're underneath this awning, so you're not getting the full effect out of it. Uh, right now you're getting 3.8 volts. If you were out in the direct sun, you'd be getting a lot more. And that deal, fresh water tanks, you got a drain. Overfill it right now. Remember that white gate wild I showed you? That's, that's the drain for the fresh water. I mean, if I'm over here filling it up, how will I know when it gets full? On your monitor and panel on the side. You got another lot right here with the same switch options. Mm -hmm. um, you got the power pressure monitoring system dock right there. What that is is inside you should have a little tire pressure monitoring kit comes with these little caps. You screw them onto your valve stem, you put that docking station there, and then I think you have to download an app on your phone, and that way you can monitor your tire pressure while you're driving, if, if you want to. Uh, this right here is gonna be the brain of your uh, solar panel. You really shouldn't have to mess with this unless you just have some technical issues with it, technicians. Go inside, go inside. Yeah. Let's see. Let's stop it. 